So much of what we do is influenced by the environment around us rather than by the habits that we create or our personalities. So it's so important to know where you're getting your inspiration because where you're getting your inspiration will influence you. For a lot of people that have chaos in their life, the chaos ends up creating a lot of inspiration. And you find this with a lot of artists. In the artist world, the stories they create, the pieces of art that they will develop will come from more of a suffering rather than a pleasure, which then when they go look for inspiration, they go look for or create more suffering. Uh, Zizek has a quote and he says, our suffering isn't a sign of our authenticity in the sense that in our day to day, for so many of us, what we end up getting stimulation from is from the negative because the negative is the focal point. If something's not going right, if something, if we struggle, right? And in those spaces, we're able to get a deeper sense of what we're feeling. So the question is, why can't we do this in a healthy environment? Why do we always have to lean into an unhealthy environment? So coming back to Dr. Jason Fung, he is really incredible and he talks a lot about intermittent fasting, but he was talking about the body's receptors and he said that it's not so much about counting the calories, but not being aware of what your body's communicating when your body says it's full or it's not full. Um, so that is just something to think about. Now, how this works when it comes to our interior design, when we talk about our body in the sense of the way we communicate with the world, it works the same way. Now, the reason that nowadays we struggle so much with eating, right? Our communication with food is because there's a lot of synthetic or GMO, you know, modifications in our food, which then sends the communicates the wrong things, right? Or it misleads us, either creating more appetite or just any anything, right? Like it gives us an addiction to any kind of preservatives, right? We, we get we get addicted to like the salts and the sugars. But the worst thing that it does is it disconnects you with your interior communication, which is the most dangerous thing nowadays. Um, and this happens with our phones. This happens with having jobs or envisioning these big lives that we want, these ambitious lives. And I always say, have dreams. Dreams are really, really important to have. But when we're trying to figure out what our priorities are, we have to come back to the intu intuition. Like our intuition, the relationship we have with our body, that communication is everything. Now, if there's anything in life that is going to take us away, right, or disconnect or sever the communication, that is where we need to dive a little deeper and be cautious of what that what it what is actually happening. So for a lot of us, we a lot of the advice that we get is to go out there and hustle and the answers are out there. 
And talking from experience, I've done this too, where I keep searching and keep searching, but the answers are all inside of us in that foundation experience of connecting to our interior receptors and learning about that communication. One of the greatest ways to do this is to meditate. When we take that time to sit with ourself quietly and reconnect, what happens is our receptors become familiar to us, right? So we identify with things that are familiar. It's like if you're a fan of a certain brand or, or a band, right? When you hear their music or if you, you can identify their clothes from a mile away in the sense that you are so in tune to the design or the way it's created that you're familiar with it. So it's, like, it's, it's relatable. For so many of us, we haven't taken the time to get to know ourselves well enough on a day to day that so much of what we're building is somebody else's experience rather than our own. So much of what we're investing in is the search rather than what is simply there. So then when it comes to the communication we struggle because we're not able to communicate clearly with ourselves. And then in turn, we struggle with communicating with the world or maybe understanding what the world is trying to communicate with us. So meditating is a great, is one great way. Doing five or 10 minutes of just stepping away from everything, it'll, it'll create this sense of what's important to you and for a lot of us sometimes we forget what we value and we can be in relationships with other people that expect certain things from us but that's their vision it's not ours and if we want if we have a certain vision or we know what makes us comfortable we need to find that support within first so Meditating is really great. Um, the next thing is, is to always ask yourself definitions, right? So every single one of us have our own Webster dictionary. Every single one of us process feelings and emotions differently and words differently. So when you have a broad understanding of who you are, writing down the things that matter to you or who who you feel you are, where you feel you are, your process, notice the words. And then you can take a specific word if you find yourself using it often enough and asking yourself, well, what does that mean to me? So for example, I'll take the word abandonment, right? So if I feel a sense of abandonment, I have to ask myself, well then, what does that feel? What does that mean to me? And then there usually will be a story. And out of that, it could be the fear of loneliness. And from there, it could be the fear of maybe incompetence or the lack of funds, right? And we can literally do our own problem solving just by sitting down and being okay with our own process. But what that does is it builds that emotional immunity. It rebuilds that connection with the sept with the scepters where we're not going to go like to the grocery store and buy the wrong food because we will get our taste buds back. Just like we'll get our taste buds back when we eat healthy, we will be get begin to get our intuition will become stronger. The receptors, our communication with our body will become so much stronger that we could hear it, right? And we go into space and we naturally begin to make the right choices without relying on somebody else. So that second thing is taking that time to journal through it. 
but more of a like a mindful journey journaling where you notice ask yourself those questions like ask yourself very specific questions so that's number two and then number three is if you just even take the time to organize your schedule on a day-to-day just write down the your schedule in general and then make two like make make two rows and ask yourself divide the paper in half and ask yourself what part what am i doing to move towards my journey and what am i doing to escape the journey right so intuitively you will know what is what another interesting factor is that one thing that is really fascinating is that there's this sense of like openness and then there's that sense of closedness right so in different areas so when we talk about let's say learning for example what learning will do and this is torah or anything that you will learn if it has concrete values more often than not you will not come to conclusions in the sense that what it will do is it will broaden the experience it'll broaden the experience it'll create a sense of appetite it'll create it'll awaken certain receptors within you and then you have other experiences which create a sense of fullness like with food right if you're eating the right food and you're full for example when you eat good protein you're full for much longer for example i had some meat i had some steak last night and i know that when i eat steak for dinner i'm full for longer so sometimes i won't have to eat till the next day lunch so it's interesting to know what are the things that take you that carry you from one place to the other and to know in when you when you have that paper in front of you where you've split the paper in two and you've written your two rows of of experiences what you want to do is is you also want to ask yourself what is creating an opportunity to explore more and what is helping me create this foundation of wholeness fullness and fulfillment because for a lot of us what we we struggle with we we it's we bat, we batch everything into one space where we're like we think we're going to get everything from everything and we're not able and then what happens is is the emotions eclipse the experiences eclipse and it's like saying if i don't make enough money i don't have any value or if i'm not pretty enough um i also might be very stupid and if i'm fat then i'm not i can't be healthy and these are little silly things that when we see we're not able to come to a conclusion of some kind where we put everything you know we, we batch it all together then the conclusions end up really not making any sense so when we put these things down on paper and we're able to say does this create more of an openness in my life does this does this create fulfillment we're we're able to also identify where those things are for example with children if you have children the sense of fulfillment comes from nurturing them but it, we can there's very little that we can expect back from them and if we are expecting things back we're going to be very miserable in the sense that in that space that won't happen as in they will surprise you and they will be wonderful but we can't rely on them for that fulfillment it's us that is nurturing them and we have to let go and allow them to blossom into that unconditional you know unconditional space where they get to explore and become these amazing human beings but on their own terms right we're just there to guide them um so there's some places also where you can get more creativity so for example um a really great one that i shared with somebody um this week as well was when you are experiencing life you have to split things up into a couple categories sometimes 
your creativity is not going to come from your job. A lot of people, when they look for a job or they're in a job, they get frustrated that they don't, they're not able to be creative in their job. So you have to ask yourself, okay, wh what am I doing this job for? And if it is to bring in money, you go do the job to bring in the cash, right? To be able to pay the bills. And then that creativity is something that is reserved for something that you are developing in yourself. And if you did spend that creativity in the workplace, you're going to struggle with it outside of that. Now, some relationships are more creative than others in the sense that some some people's partners are are, you know, we are the the relationships are just more exploratory and some are just more consistent um and boring, which is not a bad thing. There is a simplicity to it and a modesty that can be also so, so beautiful. So you have to ask yourself, like, where am I being creative? Where am I being assertive, right? And then lastly, you have to ask yourself, you can break this down. And I have, um, I made a, um, a planner for the uh, Motherload podcast. I made the planner, which has a lot of this on it, which helps organize your day. So feel free. If you signed up for the newsletter, um, I, I'll send it to you for free. And basically, you have to ask yourself, where do you delegate, where do you eliminate, and where do you automate? And this is also in your list, where sometimes the things that we're doing, we're just wasting our time on certain tasks when we can really put that effort into the things that our energy into something that really matters more. So depending on how much creative energy you have, um, spiritual energy that you have, or just physical energy that you have, will determine also the type of tasks that you end up doing and the way you approach all your work in a day. From getting up in the morning to what you eat, to where you work, and what you spend your spare time doing, um, what your passions are. So I think that that is yeah that that really can sum it up taking that time to tap into those receptors will do everything for you so meditating journaling and identifying the words asking yourself what if you find that there are certain words that you keep using just go into a rant of what they mean to you and if you're not sure go into the story and you will find and you'll go deeper and deeper to to discover it and then beginning to organize noticing what creates no, more openness in your life and creativity and what creates fulfillment. So thank you so much for joining me today in this experience. Let yourself heal, heal. It's easy to feel.